It seemed that the ring he had was a magic ring. It made you invisible. He had heard of such things, of course, in old, old tales, but it was hard to believe that he really had found one by accident. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today I want to go into depth on a common question in Middle-earth lore, one asked to Royan and I in our latest monthly podcast episode on Patreon and in our YouTube memberships. Did Sauron sense Bilbo using the One Ring? Sources for today's video may be found in the description and cards, and if you'd like to hear that full episode, please consider joining our Patreon and YouTube memberships. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me today. Let's begin our tale. Our question today brings up an interesting dynamic concerning the One Ring and its lore. At times, it seems that the One Ring is actually quite dangerous, and it is dangerous to use it, that Sauron will either find or extremely corrupt the one wearing it. While at other times in the lore, in both the movies and the books, characters wear the ring without almost any harm at all. So let's start with Bilbo here, since he's generally what we're looking at with this question, but it does apply to other characters as well, namely Gollum and Samwise Gamgee. In The Hobbit, Bilbo wears the ring to not only his benefit, but not to his detriment within the story at all. It really only begins to drain him in the years and decades after the events of his story, as he becomes obsessed with it, and it elongates his life. But during the events of The Hobbit themselves, the ring only helps Bilbo ultimately. Now, there are certainly reasons for this outside of our in-universe explanations. Tolkien did not necessarily plan to expand on the tale of The Hobbit at the time of its creation, nor tie it to be in the same world as the Silmarillion. But as time went on and the story expanded forth, creating The Lord of the Rings, further backstory about the Second Age and the creation of the Rings of Power, Tolkien developed the One Ring with its story and abilities, as well as some of its dangers. But concerning our in-universe reasons, Sauron, or the Necromancer as he was known during the events of The Hobbit, was being kept rather busy by the White Council and their assault in that year, 2941, at Dol Guldur. Sauron was not in Mordor, and the Nazgul that served under him stayed within the fortress of Minas Morgul. He also did not have access to the Palantir that he would use in the future, the Ithiel Stone from Minas Morgul, if that has any impact on how he searched for his ring, potentially using it. But our question here goes even beyond this. Why wasn't Gollum hunted down whenever he used the ring? And Sauron had by that time returned to Dol Guldur from the east after the Watchful Peace. Furthermore, during the events of The Lord of the Rings, Sam Gamgee used the One Ring at the end of the Two Towers book even on the outskirts of Mordor after Frodo was pierced by Shelob. Granted, a Nazgul did eventually fly overhead near the Tower of Kirith Ungol once Frodo was rescued and the two hobbits had to escape him, so maybe the Nazgul sensed the ring being used by Sam beforehand, but again, like Bilbo, Sam was incredibly lucky as Sauron and his forces were all preoccupied at that exact moment with the invasion of Gondor and so on and so forth. But why is this the case? Especially with Bilbo, how could he get away with using the ring so often, but Frodo was in danger by simply having the ring? Or when he wore it, at the Prancing Pony or later on in the story at Amonhen? I think there are many answers, but answers that only account for parts and pieces of this. No holistically satisfying one answer for this question. When we talked about this one in the podcast, we brought up the idea that to wear the ring may have been more like directing a compass more than using a GPS for Sauron. The Nazgul could apparently, according to Strider, feel the nearness and presence of the ring, and were always drawn to it. I imagine that if they had this power, Sauron himself did as well, but did not have the capacity to go forth himself to find it. Yet, it was not the full indicator of where exactly the One Ring was. However, there were times that the Nazgul were actively looking for the ring, and times when they were rather busy with war, and so perhaps Frodo could get away with more usage of the ring during the latter. The events of The Hobbit took place during such a time, when Sauron was very preoccupied in Dol Guldur and his Nazgul were sealed within Menas Morgul. While I personally believe that they could sense the ring when it was being used, they did not have the power or really capability at that time to go forth and reclaim it from whoever was using it. Besides this, perhaps when the wearer knew the true power and evil of the One Ring, it could have changed how its power shone forth to others, as Gollum used it for simple stealth reasons like Bilbo did, 
and the ring was never taken away from him. Yet, when Frodo did, knowing its true weight and its power, perhaps that made him more prone to being found? And I do wonder if evil is drawn naturally towards the ring, or even if Sauron sends evil forces near to the direction or place where he could sense it being used. For instance, Gollum, when he had the ring near the end of his time with it, was right beneath Goblin Town. Perhaps his use of the ring was the reason for the nearness of those goblins. Maybe Sauron played some part in sending forth these goblins to live there or to move to this spot in the Misty Mountains, or even sending forth the armies at the Battle of Five Armies towards Erebor, as he could sense the use of the ring in that direction. Obviously, there are many other reasons that that battle happened, but potentially, if Sauron played a role in directing any movement of troops towards the Lonely Mountain, this could have been part of the reason why. It could simply be that Sauron's resources were stretched too thin to truly pursue the presence of the One Ring every time a character wore it. But there is a problem with this idea, though. If he sensed the One Ring being used near Kirith Ungol when Sam put it on, why would he ever believe, like he did, that Aragorn also had the Ring later at the Battle of the Black Gate? Sauron could not sense the Ring without a wearer, most certainly, at least not from vast distances away, otherwise he would have found it in the Anduin River. But maybe he only started searching for it when he learned that it had been found, or when he began to sense it more and more, or when he returned to Mordor and could finally truly locate the object that was created in Mordor. I'm not sure. As for the corruption that the ring gave off itself, Bilbo was never forced to give up the ring during the events of The Hobbit, not like Frodo would have to try to do towards the end of the events of The Lord of the Rings. And perhaps Bilbo was still strangely attached to it, but such an attachment was never tested in the story. Maybe it still had the same effects overall on Bilbo, but maybe not. Bilbo was always rather sassy within his tale, even before he got the ring, so I'm not sure if he really had any attitude or personality change when he got it either. But again, the reason that I bring that up is because the ring kind of acts a little bit differently within The Lord of the Rings versus within The Hobbit. Potentially, this also could be an idea having to do with a line of sight in the Unseen World. Perhaps Frodo putting on the ring in the Prancing Pony allowed the Nazgul to see past everything else in the Seen World, almost looking through physical objects, to see something, Frodo, entering the Unseen Realm, which they also exist in, making him stand out even across vast distances like Breland itself. Indeed, perhaps none who could actually see into the Unseen Realm were close enough to Bilbo during the events of The Hobbit to see and hunt him down. Frodo was seen by Sauron at Amonhen for maybe the same reason, as the Hill of Seeing had some power to it and was an incredible vantage point, allowing for one at the top to see incredible distances. With the ring on, perhaps Sauron could see through the Unseen Realm as well from Mordor to the edge of Gondor and Rohan through all of that land, and saw this figure of Frodo standing atop a Munhen. But at the end of the day, all of this could just simply be pointing to some sort of plot hole concerning the ring. But I would hope not, because Tolkien did take great care to revise small and large moments to make things more coherent and consistent, as well as connected within his lore. But what do you all think? I've tried here to present as many possible answers as I could find or come up with, but while this video might be a little bit messy for all of the many ideas and many theories, this is one of those rare topics within the Tolkien fandom that it seems almost every single person has a varying opinion of sorts on it. So I'm curious to hear your thoughts in the comments below, as there really isn't one answer to this. Again, everybody seems to come to a different conclusion about it, so I'm curious to hear those thoughts in the comments. And so, my friends, we come to the end of our tale. From this tale, we are reminded that our deeds are observed by many forces, some we see and some we do not. Always we must take care to do good deeds, observed and unobserved. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed this Middle Earth Explained video. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. Again, Roy and I went into even more conversation and deeper thoughts on this in our podcast, which you can find through Patreon or YouTube membership, so please check that out. What are your thoughts on Sauron sensing or not sensing Bilbo using the One Ring? Let me know in the comments below. 
If you'd like to support the channel, please consider getting some candles from our friends Mythology Candles, or order some Weta or United Cutlery Lord of the Rings sword statues and other replicas from Castle Khan. It is international shipping and use the code WEST at checkout, and please check out our merch and Patreon. Thanks to our Valor Tier patrons and YouTube members, Peter Shepard, Merton, John Hume, Elizabeth Calvert, Maz Gibbs, Reese Jenkins, Arthur Merlin, Dale Davis, Theodore, Moon Viper, Andrew Carlisle, Zumi, and Brian Hunley. Thank you so much to all of our patrons and YouTube members, it really means a lot. Please subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the Free Peoples today. And I'll see you all again next week with a video on the Battle of Dwarves and Ents. A peculiar and interesting topic, I think. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one.